And we're going to finish off tonight um, with our creative bent. I get to hang out with the cool guys for a few minutes and you get to hear from them. And I'd like to welcome to the stage and come to the stage Jason Fu and Ramesh Nithiendran from the classes of 2007 and 2006. So guys, I've given you the tough gig. The tough gig is always to come up strong on the last interview and the last panel late at night when we're running over time. But I know you guys are going to do, do a great job here. Um, let me just very briefly, I'll, I'll introduce you to um, Jason to my immediate right from the class of 2007. Um, now, after finishing school, he studied art but quickly became prolific as an artist. He's exhibited his works in um, numerous solo and group shows since at least 2011, from what I can work out. Um, but this year has been a big year for Jason. Um, he was a finalist in this year's New South Wales Art Gallery Archibald Award, and um, even more phenomenally, he was the winner of the Art Gallery's prestigious Sir John Sulman Prize. So that's an absolutely fantastic outcome, and congratulations, Jason. Um, um, Ramesh, well, Ramesh makes things, and um, just introducing him, he often uses ceramics, but not, that's not all I understand. And Ramesh is a prolific artist and exhibitor in his own right as well. He was recently described as one of the world's most collectible young artists. And not to be outdone by Jason, Ramesh was only last week the winner of the Sydney Maya Fund Ceramic Art Award, the premier Australian award for artists working in ceramics. So congratulations on that most recent. So welcome to you both. Thank you for being here. Now, Jason, I might just start with you and, uh, you know, the Sulman Prize, Archibald finalist. Um, you know, you're amongst uh, some pretty famous winners in the past, like Brett Whiteley and John Olson and Tim Storia. So how does that feel? Feels pretty good. <laughs> uh, the money helps as well, so. Yeah. Uh, Do you see them as some sort of inspiration or something for you to look forward to? Um, I think especially with um, prizes like the Archibald and Solomon and Wynn, they can be so exclusive. It's, um, I, I don't enter these prizes thinking I'm going to win. They're not, they're consolations um, along my career, which is, um, as Ramesh knows as well, in art career, um, we don't know when the next prize is coming along. So we're going to have to keep working and, um, uh, yeah, just keep, like, keep our heads down and... Um, well, tell uh, us about some of that work, Jason. I mean, you've, you've, got a, you've got a very unusual style in a lot of ways. Can you tell us a little bit about your style and what you're, what you're drawing and painting? Uh, yeah, so I did my undergraduate in printmaking, uh, but I'm more known for... I, I do Chinese... So, Yep, Chinese painting. Um, it's uh, it's uh, worldwide. It's known as uh, there's a movement called New Ink, which is a contemporary takes on the Chinese painting movement. So uh, that's what I do. Yeah. When you say contemporary takes on Chinese painting, of course, there's a there's a definitely a distinct Aussie style and uh, young style that's come through very strongly, isn't there? Yeah, I'd say um, what I do isn't even that experimental. Um, what, if, if you look up New Ink in China, um, uh, there's quite amazingly experimental um, takes on Chinese painting. What I do is just say, I guess you could say very simply, an Aussie derivative of uh, Chinese painting. I was born here, but uh, obviously of Chinese descent, so... Um, Ramesh, um, your turn to, to say a few words. Um, you're, you've got a, I would at least say, an outrageous sculptural and ceramic um, bent for sure. Um, can you just tell our audience a bit about what you do, what you create? Um, I make large scale figurative ceramics, so between, I guess, currently a metre and 1.7 metres tall, um, primarily in clay. So I produce sculptural installations essentially, so works that are um, kind of site specific and then they engage with the space they're created in. Um, yeah, and I guess the work is politically engaged. Um, I'm looking at themes and orthodoxies, um, social norms, particularly surrounding 
uh, masculinity, gender relations, and race relations, so looking at post-colonial theory, and as well as the way um, religion impacts on the way our society is ordered. Okay. Um, now, who says you can't make a financially rewarding career as an artist? And this is all public knowledge. The Sulman um, Prize was 40000 and the Sydney Meyer Prize that Ramesh won was uh, $50,000. Tell me, each of you, I mean, how do you make the decision to choose fine arts as a, as a career? Um, I think, uh, like that, a lot of the speakers mentioned before, it's, um, it's something we're both passionate in, and it's something I actually never considered doing, but you could say that I was good at in high school, but that my art teachers encouraged me to do. They said, if you're passionate about it, you can make a living out of it. And um, for a lot of artists, uh, you only really start making a living in your maybe 30s or 40s. And it is about, I, I work in a kitchen right now. I've done odd jobs, which I love as well. Um, Ramesh works as well. We have to regularly apply for grants and residencies to subsidize our income. Um, uh, but we get to do the thing that we really love. So. It, it's it's all worthwhile, you know. Yeah. So, Ramesh, do you see this as a career choice? Well, what um, do you see your career as? Um, well, I just like to say most artists will never make a living off their work um, solely or primarily. Um, but the other thing that's important to note is that having an art practice or building a career as an artist um, isn't all wine in your studio and partying and being, you know, there is reckless. a lot of that though. Um, not for me. I barely. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Um, I spend all my time in my studio making work, essentially. Um, and it's, it's hard work. I think I, I, I work seven days a week on what I do. And like any career, um, if you put in the hours um, and you're engaged in your community, those are really the two fundamental principles that, tr that kind of give artists visibility. I think that's something being at Sydney Boys taught us is... Um we are both in the same art class um, and roughly the same years, but um, there's so many extracurricular activities. Um, we, we do a lot, we've, I remember doing a lot of, not that I didn't want to, but it was just something that you did, charity work, and um, you never really questioned it. It's something you just went along with, but I think that's really played off in um, being in our artistic community, um, we're a small community in Australia and it's something you have to constantly give back to, um, you know, it, whether it's helping friends um, installing a show or running a workshop for kids for free. And uh, you don't, it's not something you do where you expect to get something back. It's your, but it does often in a roundabout way um, come back and help you because you're helping a community which you're a part of, so. You touched on um, going back uh, to your time at school and you guys were in the same class in 2006. Um, now, so do you, what was it like in that class? You're only a very small group, I believe. Um, I think going to art class was the best part of Year 12. Um, it was just the best space. Um, I think um, what struck me, particularly about high school and the way the curriculum is ordered, is, a, is I guess criticality and developing critical thinking skills in broader contexts about society and culture really only ha happened the most in the art room and in the English classroom for me, um, which drew me towards the hum humanities. Um, but I guess the, for the art class in Year 12, through lots of discussions with Miss Reams, <laughs> was the time where um, I finally got some insight into what happens after Year 12 if you decide to pursue an art career. Um, we've mentioned Miss Reemst and yep. she's actually here tonight and I'd just like to bring her up on the stage <laughs> to join the boys. <laughs> so, um, so, so welcome. Uh, it's, great to, it's great to be patient and staying so late tonight yeah. so we really do appreciate that very much. Um, so you taught Jason and Ramesh and you must have seen some talent back in 2006. Uh, oh, you know, what things did you see back then that might have suggested some measure of success, if anything? Oh, definitely. Um, so, as you mentioned, we had a small group. So, the groups we get through 
to senior years, they're all passionate about what they're doing. They tend to balance um, their art with physics and their sport. And I think one of the things that's been mentioned is their work ethic. Like they, you know, they were able to. It's it's a it's a rigorous course. It's um, practical and theoretical, and they were able to balance that. And their intellect came through very clearly. And particularly for Ramesh's passion about the arts and through discussions, what, what sort of world and what kind of things it could open up, like the issues we talked about, the things it sort of traversed, the subjects we got onto, um, you know, there was a, there was a lot of... Well, that's an interesting passion. point that you make. So, Ramesh, um, you know, how much your intellect feeds into the success or otherwise, or in fact, whatever you choose to create. I mean, what is that relationship? Um, I'd like to just note that all my art, all art, most successful artists have a very high intellect and intellectual capacity um, through my observations and direct observations. But secondly, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and most artists are very skilled in personal business administration, which means they have high, a high level of literacy which allows them to write really amazing grant proposals. They're able to write that's true. They're able to write work, um, write things for different audiences, um, and able to communicate with different people in different contexts. When you exhibit, you're engaging with communities, um, curators, and different people depending on the scale of the institution and the nature and the objectives of that place. Um, so really, you know, and if you aren't smart, you'll just make an idiot of yourself a few times in public, um, and you won't get curated into anything ever again because um, the art world's very small and they all talk. Um, so ha being savvy, being intellectual and having, yeah, I, I can't repeat this, but having a really high level of literacy is really fundamental to developing an art practice. So, and Miss Reeves, um, with, with Jason, I mean, what, what did you see with Jason and, you know, how, how, did, how, does, how does his career, career play out relative to what you saw? Okay, so Jason was accelerated into that class, so he was actually in year 11. So I had, didn't know him as much as the others. For example, I'd taught Ramesh since year 10 by then. Ramesh, um, Jason was a lot quieter. I didn't quite get Jason straight away. He, he sort of held a lot back in reserve, a bit of a dark horse. Would you agree with that, Jason? <laughs> yeah, I just sat there and didn't do but very he much had, work. He had this kind of maverick uh, personality and he'd come at things left of field, which at first I thought, is he taking the mickey? Like, I, I didn't quite get it. I was a bit. <laughs> but the work really distilled, like he went through a few dead ends and it's that kind of thing where the teacher's tearing their hair out and going grey before their eyes, you know. But in the end, his, the work synthesised and the motifs and the imagery that are still present in his work were, were there in, um, in his body of work in Year 12, which he... He did get a very high score for both of these boys. Got very high scores, obviously. But, you know. Would you agree with that analysis, Jason? Yeah. Um, all I remember is uh, I've come back and uh, I they got a the art department got a press recently, so I run printmaking workshops for the um, year tens to twelves, and the first thing that Claire said was to the students was. He used to give me nightmares, so because I never used to hand in uh, any work. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess I agree with her um, memory of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pause for a moment. Paul, do you have uh, any questions from our audience? I, I, I do. Um, how did uh, your your teacher and teachers impact ultimately your career and? Do you follow your students' work? Uh, and a question um, that uh, I think the boys are interested in is, do you have any family parental challenges with your choice of career? Why don't, why don't we start with that one? Um, who, who'd like to take that last uh, question? I'll, I'll start. Um, I think the main thing that I remember with my teachers is um, uh, they didn't really limit what they said we could do in university. They were, whatever we suggested or um, thought we might do, they were very encouraging. And I, th I think that's the main thing that um, you get from Sydney Boys teachers where 
they would just really be back you on whatever you want to do. In terms of my parents, um, uh, they just said, whatever you do, do the best that you can do. And I think, yeah, that's what you guys should do. And maybe you do the best that you can do and you find out you don't want to do whatever you pick. But a lot of my friends have gone through multiple degrees and, you know, they're, they're all from Sydney High. They're all really happy, whatever they're doing right now. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess I face some cultural challenges because all my cousins are doing science and medicine and engineering. But I just told my parents that that's the way it was going to be and this is what I was doing and they had to deal with it. <laughs> Very firm. But I remember having that discussion with Ramesh about his parents and um, pointing out that his parents just wanted the best for him and that, you know, I think something along the lines that if it's your passion and, you know, I definitely feel that we had discussions about the possibility of being an artist because I, that's something I try to promote that it is possible and um, and it is it's about the hard work and follow following that is, is very important. You know, if you need to make things to have that dialogue and that discussion which these boys' works uh, bring up, that, that we need that in our culture and it's a very valuable thing to do. Look, I think that that's a really important point because and let's take a school like Sydney High which values certain things probably much more strongly than other things. And let's contrast, say, high academic achievement with creative um, uh, talent and fostering success in the arts. Now, um, what did you, did you notice challenges as you were going through school with your own preferences and your own talents and how that fitted in with the school culture? Um, yeah, well, contrary to most people here, I didn't feel that, you know, storybook Disney sense of belonging, you know, where I played sport and everything. Um, I've always had a keen critical eye about things that are fed to me. Um, I'm not a fan of meaningless authority or, you know, symbols that are just there for the sake of symbolism. So, but I was pretty comfortable in being, I guess, a loner for a few years. And then as I developed more confidence, the, the friends all just came. But um, yeah, it's true. But really, the, the two departments which I've developed the most rapport with in terms of staff were in English and in art, and that was the place I did see my sense of belonging in this school. And your experience, Jason? Um, I think uh, I was very lucky in that um, talking with people from different schools and even different grades... Um, uh, I don't know why, but every single person in our grade was friends with each other. And uh, people who played sport were also trying to study to get into med, and the sports crossed over and the studies crossed over. Um, I think it was a strong core group of um, friends that brought everyone together. But um, uh, look, I, I didn't do that well uh, in my HSC or in school. and. Didn't study very hard, but I just uh, came out of Sydney Boys with a great bunch of friends that I still hang out with, and uh, I just remember it as a fun time where I didn't do very much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Claire, um, I believe that um, Sydney High is um, getting much better at supporting um, alternative curricula at the school. Can you just tell us where we're up to on that? Yeah, I think that we've got a, um, we're building a, a very strong culture where um, the art department, the creative arts department led by Jenny May, that's, that's our sort of way that we want to work. So Jason's helped us, he's given back to us by doing um, our workshops for a very low fee. <laughs> you know, having these uh, workshops where they meet artists or we get um, people to come in so we have authentic tasks. Um, I think we are really, that's, that's what we want to do, build a really strong culture of, um, of art and music and I think we're particularly doing that and we're all sort of 
in, in our department. That's what excites us to build up that department. It's, it's fantastic. You know? It's wonderful to hear, especially when we know that we can help to nurture and grow such outstanding talent. And um, look, as much as I'd like to keep talking to these cool guys, um, I think we do have to uh, wrap it up at the moment. Paul, is there any last question before, um, before we wrap it up? Otherwise, um, yeah, there's, Paul. There's one. Is, one more. Is, okay, here we go. Is there any advice for budding young artists in the room? Work really hard. Um, yeah. Oh, don't expect to make any money for the next 20 years. And <laughs> be, be, try and be happy in whatever second job you need because I... I to be honest, I want to. I, I wouldn't mind being a chef, and I've loved working in kitchens for the last ten years. And so, yeah, get a get a. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. Congratulations. Thanks for coming along. There's there's still a few of our old boys here. Please come and shake some hands and have a little bit of a chat before you go. And a quick refreshment. Um, sorry. Okay, there you go. So let's. Let's have a go. So good night and thank you very much for being here. I really, really appreciate it.